interesting, thrilling, engaging, fun. You know what? Because I have Cynthia Lippins joining me on the show today. You're welcome, Cynthia. Hi. Hello. Okay. She is, amongst other things, uh, a certified biochemist, a student nurse. Um, she is a wife and she's a brain behind at r underscore swell world on Instagram. And recently, she is a YouTuber. Her name is Pauls and Cynthia on YouTube. Guys, you need to subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, like, and share this video. Cynthia, okay. it's good to have you here. You're welcome once again. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, you, we are discussing love. How to attract your kind of love, no matter the race. Cynthia, you are a love advocate. I love to call you that, okay? So you're a love advocate. What engineered your passion for love? Um, I have passed through a lot um, back in the days when I'm in Africa, in Nigeria precisely, and also um, then coming here and viewing a little bit of difference. Um, I really want to preach love because it's really, um, it's real and it's, is necessary in, in someone's life. Uh, being alone, uh, it's not really the, the best way, but when you really are in love with someone, uh, that means you two can share things together. And I mean, it's, it's better. Uh, to what they say, two heads is better than one. Two heads are better than one. So I think preferably it's better um, when you have someone you love around you. Uh, to be with you regarding uh, whatever situation, good time, bad time, happiness, you know, just sharing it with someone is really makes it easy uh, for life to go on. Okay. okay. You um, want people, you passionately want people to find their soulmate. Okay. Why is it important mm -hmm. for you, for people to, to find their soulmate, per se? Hmm. So many, yeah, that's a big word to use because no one knows who is who. You're married to someone uh, for like 10 years, 20 years, even two months, and they will divorce and feel uh, in, 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 in no distance time. So it's really varies. So many is a really big word, but to me, I'll, find, I'll say finding someone really who you, you love and who you care, without restarting, something may come up in, in the future, not that we are praying for it, but in regards of finding someone who you really love, uh, your soulmate, I think it all has to do with you, okay? It's all got to do with you, your whole, your personal being, the, the way you see things, the, the way you, you perceive things around you, and the way you accept people the way they are, rather than, um, you know, um, you, uh, either because of one particular circumstances and because of that, you, you won't give that person a chance in your life. Most times people can be a blessing to someone in disguise. Most times people really need you. Someone really need you actually to be complete. So to me, um, finding someone who is a soulmate really depends on how you yourself as an individual perceive another person. And like how you you perceive someone else, so I think it got to do with that. So when you really accept someone for who he or she is, and then you guys will start knowing each other, gradually building something better. From there, you find a soulmate. You can't just find a soulmate just like that. It's not gonna work. It's a, it's a gradual thing you build up. You build, you build it up, and from there you now discover. Oh my God, this is really what I've been missing. Like. This is really what I really wanted in my life. This is really, he's actually my soulmate. That's when you complete. It's not just in one month, in two, it varies, you know, everybody depends on how their own relationship is. But truly, it takes time to build to, a, to that level of you saying, oh my God, this guy is truly my soulmate. 
<laughs> okay, it's interesting. You have a quite a different opinion because I see people saying, "Oh, he's my soulmate," and they're not even married. You know, uh, it's very. I mean, I find it interesting to know that you have a quite a different view to what soulmate is. It's interesting. Okay, so you are married to someone who isn't a Nigerian, and you are a Nigerian. Okay, so uh, I mean, ha, ha, this question is very important to me. Okay, is it what you've always wanted, or uh, is it what you always wanted and you walked towards it, or was it just a coincidence and you have to like accept it and say, okay, this is my luck? I have to do what I call check and balance. <laughs> I, I say, I, I say check check and balance and being in the UK I know a lot of things is really happening a lot of uh, people of my people of my color um, have issues in their marriage not everybody but some of them and uh, when it comes to uh, being faithful and trusting someone is really difficult uh, it's not really easy and I'm also checking my own previous um, relationship back in Africa. Um, I have to like make a very good decision for myself. Like, like, is this really what I want? <clears throat> is it really what I want? Will this person really give me what I really want? Will this person give me that secured mind? Will, will this person, will I be bothered? Will I be thinking when he goes out? Will I be secured with this person? And after checking it through, I, I feel like, yeah, I want to try a different race and see uh, a, a different um, a thing totally. And it really came out good for me because um, really, I, I I love it. He's a, he's not from Nigeria. He's from he's from um, Latvia, uh, and a European country, not in UK. And he is the most sweetest guy. Oh my God. <laughs> he's caring, he's loving. I can sleep for three years, for years without thinking, even if he's out, gone out, and I'm still like, yeah, I know where he is. Mm. And I can probably tell you, I know where he is. So much confidence. So that is what I want in a relationship. Whereby I can build it and I say, yes, I know this is my man. And he is my neighbor. Like, that is what I want in a relationship, not where you be like, when your mom goes out, you be worried. Uh, I don't want that, man. I don't want that. <laughs> Nobody wants to die young, bro. <laughs> right. I have no uh, okay, yeah, so, so right. in essence, you just, you just said that, okay, it's not what you like, you walk towards it. Did you just say you walk towards it? Not really that I walk towards it. I have to check, you know. Okay, where, where the options available? Yeah, yeah, I have to vary it and check my past and my present drive. And I say, like, oh my God, this is the best way, this is the way forward. And, and I'm really happy with the choice I made. It's Congratulations beautiful. on your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, you're watching Push It Out to Linda. We'll be going on a short break right now. But when we come back, I mean, you don't have to move a muscle because when we come back, I'll be asking Cynthia some of the biggest challenges she's encountered in her relationship and you get to know how to be approachable. I mean, you're not going to find love if nobody's going to approach you. So do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Kusha Talks with Linda. We are talking about um, love, how to attract a kind of love. And I have Cynthia Lippins joining me. Oh, she's already joined me, okay? So... <laughs> Before we continue, let's just have some fun, okay? I mean, what's love with our fun? So let's have some fun. Let's play some games. Okay, Cynthia, get your drink out, please, please, please. You you would drink and have a pot belly today. I, trust me. Okay. All right. So uh, we are going to be playing the games Never Ever or Never Have I Ever, something like that. I mean, I keep having a tongue twist with that word, but that's by the way. Okay, so I'm gonna say a word or a sentence, a real life situation. If she has done it before, if she has never done it before, she passes. But if she has done it, you have to drink, gulp down that whole, that what I'm seeing right now for one question. <laughs> okay. okay, try me. Okay, um, let me get my questions out here. So, Cynthia, let's go. Never ever have you faked being sick to attract attention from your love. 
Fancy. Never. Okay, so you yeah. haven't. Oh. Never ever have you Googled, never ever have you Googled the meaning of something your love said and you didn't know. You just have to Google it so you can flow with the conversation. Definitely. Jesus Christ. I'm not a dictionary. I have to Google. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> I gotta take it easy, okay? Yeah, yeah, take your time, drink, but you just have to finish it. <laughs> Would you care to join me? Thank you. Thank you, no. <laughs> have fun, it's for you. Oh my God, it's too much. Uh-uh, I'm the one that put this point on your cup for you, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, this is too much. Oh God in heaven. Am I still drinking all of that? Yeah. I can see something red on that dark cup, you know. Woo! Congratulations! All right, let's get That's a nobody. That's a nobody. You need it. So, just listen to my next question why you poured a drink. Never ever have you kept, have you been kept stranded by someone? By a lover? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Oh my goodness. So, drink <laughs> I'm the one. Cheers. Holy Moses. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? Never no. ever have you injured yourself from a romantic chase. <laughs> what do you mean chase? <laughs> <laughs> okay, like you know, you guys go out to, to have fun, and you know, other times when you have to run around a tree or something, just a romantic chase, not in, not in, you know, serious, but then you, you get injured in the process. Are you serious? I feel like pitching you right now and dropping all this question. So I don't know, you must be very full. <laughs> Okay. Oh God in heaven! I have to skip a question that I am. I'm like, you have to drink to that. I just have to skip to go to the next question. And here you are drinking. <laughs> you must be a romantic fellow, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. I just hope you don't have to drink to this. So never ever have you spit. Have you had to spit after kissing someone because they have a bad breath? Oh, Jesus Christ. It may not be a bad thing. Maybe I don't like it. It wasn't disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> mm. My God. I actually have I don't like that place. I don't like the place. Yeah, it's disgusting. Mm. Oh. It takes me back to something I don't like. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh, okay. I should have this question, but I'll just pity you now. Let me just leave that five questions. So put, put the drink in. Put, call me a nice fellow. I'm actually nice, you know. Because I know you definitely drink to that. So, um, partially. Pardon? You're a nice person, partially. <laughs> okay, so um, over to my next question, you know. Okay, for someone who wants to attract someone from another race, okay, what are the steps a person should take? There is nothing like attracting. When another race likes you, they like you. And they like you because of your complexion, the way you look, the way you, the way you talk, uh, the way you carry yourself. There's something different about you they see that they don't see somewhere else. That's why they want you. Um, but regardless, uh, for you to want to really attract them, I think it's all cut to me. You have to accept them. The way they are. You have to accept the food they eat and also try to, you have to join the other group, you have to join the, <laughs> eat with them, you have to learn things also the way they behave. You also have to try to start to adapt to their cultural differences. Um, I mean, lots, everything about it, both with, with um 
also trying to learn how to start understanding their accent the way they speak. <laughs> because <laughs> that one is a very big um, problem, you know, understanding how they, they speak. Because once you get to understand them properly, that, then there will be a very good communication. And also, there is, they also have humor. And the way they type, they are typing, oh my God, can really cause problems if you don't really understand what they are really saying. They might not really mean it. But you might understand in a different way from Nigerian, I'm talking of, uh, from Nigerian background, <laughs> because I, I had that issue. So as, at the end, at, at some point, we said, like, okay, no testing. If we need anything, it's better we call, we talk, and understand mm -hmm. it. But most times, testing can be misunderstood, you know. And then also, just relax. Relax, don't force yourself into someone. Whoever likes you will come for you. My partner came for me. I, had a, <laughs> I was too busy. I was too busy. I guess we might come to that later on. Okay. Okay, I, I like the fact you said just relax because most times we ladies, we get apprehensive, like, oh my God, uh, I feel good. So you were married to your husband for about a year now. And um, what has what is the biggest challenge for you, considering the you know difference in culture? No, no, I don't think there are any challenges because I understand him fluently. Uh, I've been here for a long time, so I'm, I'm used to the accent when they speak. So that speaking or understanding his, him uh, when he talk is no longer a challenge for me. But I think the challenge might be, um, you know, the way people people um, might perceive us. Or the way people might perceive, you know, us when we walk on the road, they, they look at us like, is this guy really okay? Not everybody. Some people will like stare like, you know, they don't know. Especially when we go to the countryside, like somewhere in like in an undeveloped place, like countryside, where there are old people, they stare at us like they haven't seen uh, two different races together. So it's really... Um, that's the only challenge. Apart from that, I think I'm really okay with him. Food-wise, I'm very. Lo he loves my food. I, I I I love his food. I love their food, in their own culture. It's I think there is not so much uh, like a challenge. Okay, you, you said you you know the stare at you. How do you cope with the staring? Because it's something they do almost everywhere. You know, people want to stare. You know, how did you cope with that? No, this theory is different. This theory is like saying something to you, like he's saying, what, what is he doing with this uh, black woman? Let me use that phrase, black woman, or this woman of color, something like that. Uh, but I don't really care. Like, All that matters. Is, right that, or something? Uh, is it something like that? No? Uh, is it the kind of stare, like, is this dude okay? You know? Yeah. Yeah, is he really okay like picking this? I've also gotten that um, kind of statement from a, 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 from my people of my color on Facebook at the start of my relationship. Like someone sending me messages like that I'm a disappointment to, to to Nigeria. I was like, what do you mean? I didn't even waste any time. I just eh, if I delete, I unfriend, unfollow, reported him for that. That is racism. And also on block, as in blocking from my side. Not only one person, three people has done it. Have done it, and I've blocked all of them from mine. No, you. That's your own opinion. I have mine, and I accepted it. And my family are okay with it. My my partner loves me the way I am, and I love him the way he is. So no one has the right to say any discriminating stuff about my partner towards me. To me, please, I won't take it. You know, that's it. Okay, it's, it's really it's really good you, you point that out, you know. Okay, ah, all right. So that's my last question because I kind of remember the scenario right now because just this morning I had to unfriend someone because I was I was just going through my timeline on Facebook. I saw someone who who just preached against a belief I hold so dear. I just went to the person's profile and unfriended it. You know, I mean it's it's crazy. I didn't have to. <laughs> You know, yeah, and fought because it was on the person's time. Instead of instead of instead of having an argument, instead of having an yeah. argument, just on friend. Yeah. Okay. No need to. Okay, so how do girls make themselves approachable? I mean, how do, especially ladies, how do we make ourselves approachable? You know, it, it, 
in Nigeria, for instance, most men feel that um, they, they feel intimidated by young girls, especially no matter your age, though, especially when you are doing so good. So how do we, how can we make ourselves approachable to turn down the intimidation towards us? Did you hear my question? Well, regardless, yes, it would be cracking, but I, I got it. Yeah, but um, to me, um, how to make yourself approachable is first of all, beauty, man. You need to look good. First of all, you got to look good, make sure you're presentable, regardless of whatever you're doing, whether you're a classy woman, being a businesswoman, um, or a student, you need to try to look good, take care of yourself. And secondly, Find something to you. Don't be dependent on any man. Like, don't like let him say that. Oh Lord, you depend on her, on him, and uh, you can't even afford things on your own self. Because if you give him that first impression, I think that is very bad. But I know, considering the condition back home, <clears throat> it's a bit difficult. As most women depend on men, it's different from here. Because you are working, even as a college student or at the age of 16, you are allowed to work. So you, are, you can do some things and you can most, at the age of 20, you see them having lovely money, having driving cars of their own. So it's totally different from, from this place, from this view here, and then from back home. But regardless, no matter what, try to be self-independent. Um, and not, if you are successful, thumbs up to you. It's good to be successful. It's good to be beautiful. It's good to be intelligent and wise. And that man that feels that you are, um, that sees you as, a, as, you know, intimidating for them not to approach you because you are successful. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry to speak to you, but that's the fact. He doesn't okay. know what he's doing. Yeah, you really need, it doesn't matter success or not success. It doesn't really matter. It shouldn't be a hindrance between you for a man not to be able to accept a woman. Okay, Cynthia, okay, Cynthia. You post a lot of pictures on your Facebook stories. I give it up to you. You post a lot of pictures. Okay, and it seems your husband likes this, you know, gestures of yours. But what would you say to someone whose spouse doesn't like that, you know, paparazzi kind of like? At first, it wasn't easy. Yeah, my partner, whenever we go out, like on travels, oh my God, he loves camera. He will be the one to get the camera. But if I'm in the audit of my uh, blogging uh, system, I have to be keeping the, the public updated, okay? So, which means I have to introduce camera to him, even when he's sleeping, even when he's just coming back from work, I have to, <laughs> babe, we need to snap pictures, please. Something like that. He wasn't really uh, uh, happy, you know, really into it, but gradually, gradually, and as he has seen other people also in the same um, system doing well, yeah, he, I think he's giving in, like, gradually. And as you can see, if you watch my YouTube video, you see the way he was, at the start, it wasn't okay, but in the middle, he, yeah. he started speaking up, like, from uh, yeah, hell. That I is what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you, it's left to you to be, it's gradual, but you don't force the person, you don't force your man to do it, but trust me, give him, let him see things that is not, the, the camera is not going to bite you, it's just a friendly, and you're not doing anything bad, and gradually I think he's going to go into it, that, I, I, look, at he's even giving suggestions of things to do next to me, so yeah. it's a gradual process, it's not going to be like, mm, this can just come Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. It's all a right. Process, yeah. All right, we are running short of time right now. I have to take some questions from people right now. Um, I have this question from someone. He says, "How can I find true love irrespective of our cultural differences?" You just answered that, right? You've answered that before. But can you just put shit some more light? Well, uh, how to find someone you love is reciprocal as far as the person is able to give back what you're giving like instance loving you back 
able to care for you, communicate, not only come into your house to clean your house. Jesus, no. <laughs> there are, you know, there are some sensitive things. If this person is really important and concerned of your well-being in terms of asking about your work, how is work, how is it going, how is your family, encouraging you where there is issues, she tried to give you suggestions. Now, does that, this kind of girl, that girl really have you at heart, or like really have cares for you. I think that's a way to know that this person like you. And, and to find someone, it's not really easy. But inter and if, if you're working, I think the internet has made it easier for anyone to, to find love, like I found my partner. What you're looking out for is um, the person it's of the personal character of the, of the, of the lady you really want. Uh, you're looking out for, for her character, whether she cares for you, and you're looking out into, and when you, I mean caring. Caring doesn't mean she'll come to your house and, and start cleaning your house, then you know, oh God, this is really, really, really attractive. When I mean, once in terms of communication, give you some contribution when you have in difficulties, you know, kind of playing a kind of a good role in your life. I think that's the best way. And the best way to find it, if you're working and you're too busy, I think the internet has made it easier for us to do that, which is uh, online dating. You can start online and with that way you build that community. Me and my partner, my partner met me online. So he has been chatting me online for over two months. And I wasn't really feeling that blue light, you know. Um, but he keep on chatting me from off turn on and off and I come online once in a week and I reply and when I come back again he, he sends he keep on sending me messages like every day he sends a message every day he sends a message and when I come I'll see all the messages I'm like oh my god but after two months I was like I think this guy is really really into me and I had to give him the chance and when I gave him that chance and uh, we moved from social media to whatsapp and when we started chatting and everything, um, we started to see each other. Now we are living together and we are married. So it's, it's, it's trying to say that you can find what you're looking for in social media. That is if you don't use it for a different purpose. Some people are using it to mess around just to get girls to sleep around and that's it. If you're really looking for someone and you're kind of a busy person and maybe you feel like you're a bit insecure talking to someone or being bold to talk to a girl, I think social media is the best way to talk to people. And there's a lot of uh, um, um, social media out there. You can go through Facebook. Um, even on Instagram, you can even meet people there. On match.com, you can be, meet people on Big Fish. So a lot of apps are, are there for people to really meet. just have to google and really make up your mind what you really want in a relationship and not to misuse what that app is really meant for people really use that to find people to find their soulmates to find your wife to find a good lady for themselves so you can still try that it's not really bad you it must it mustn't be a face-to-face -face, uh first communication you can start online build the communication even you can even build it for months before you guys see i think that's the best way and don't you ever be intimidated of someone's source of it if a lady's source of it. rather encourage her and tell her that you're really proud of her that's really also makes the girl happy you know it's really lovely okay <laughs> guys i hope you're listening uh, all right so i have another question here i think this is the last question i will take so um we can end this Yes, someone said, yes, is there anything like love without money? Like the kind of love we see in Nollywood movies, where a prince will from nowhere fall in love with a poor orphan. Is it really in this, our present time? I don't know. I think the person is talking about Definitely. loving without money. Can you find yes. love even if you don't have money? Yeah, you can find love without no money. But what I'm trying to say is that not that there won't be no money at all at all like there will be money or this person is in the process of getting to his or her destination do you understand what i'm trying to be saying okay, if you see this guy is walking and he has a place he's staying he has a roof of his, of his head on, on, under his head i mean and he's walking which means he's he's doing something you, you mustn't wait for someone to be a billionaire, a billionaire, like have houses or drive different cars or cars. No. 
You, as a lady, can support him. You, a lady, can encourage him, can push him up, to lift him up, to get to that destination which he really wants. And building such a strong relationship with him from that small scale to a bigger scale is really good. And it's really beautiful. Because you got to tell the story, how it all started. You mustn't wait for a bed of roses where things are really made for you. No. You two can still build it together. I mean, I'm, you know, it's a gradual process. It can, it, uh, like me and my partner, we are building ourselves. We are building ourselves gradually. And we will get there. It's only if you believe and you have to help each other. It's just two people doing the same thing together. And the same way, together, you guys will rule the world. That's how it's done. Okay, so um, that's, you heard it. Whoever wrote in that question, I hope you heard it from her. Okay, so you don't have to start so big. You can actually start as little as you have and then, you know, walk towards you know, making it into something big, you know. So that's much I can say from questions I have today. I have a couple of questions, but I mean, I think any question I have here is um, related somehow to what you've already said in the, you know, previously. So, so thank you, Cynthia, for joining me on Kusha Talk with Linda today. Thank you. Like, I'm really, really, you know, happy to have had you on the show. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching Kusha Talk with Linda. My name is Linda. To like come your way next time, please subscribe to Paul and Cynthia on YouTube, okay? And subscribe to this channel right now. So like come your way next time, subscribe, like, and share this video. Bye. Thank you.